What's up everybody, it's Mike Sherrard and today I've got one of my most exciting episodes for you guys ever. This is something that I don't do too often, but I had to seize this opportunity to bring this content to you guys. Today, I have the rare opportunity to sit down with hometown hero, James Lawrence, also known as the Iron Cowboy. They recently just released a full documentary on the absolutely insane journey he had just a couple years ago. This journey is called the 50-50-50, where James did 50 full Ironmans in 50 days across 50 different states. So I get the opportunity today to sit down with James and ask him two questions I've wanted to ever since I saw that documentary. What's up everybody, again, welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna bring you a very exclusive interview that I get to have with James Lawrence, also known as the Iron Cowboy. As mentioned, James has an incredible record-setting triathlete history, but he's achieved some extraordinary things that can't even be fathomed by the majority of people. Many years ago, James set out and absolutely destroyed the record for the most full Ironmans in one single year, which was 30. And for those who don't know what a full Ironman consists of, it's almost four kilometers of swimming, 180 kilometers of biking, and a full 42 kilometer marathon in one go. After he completed 30 in one year, shattering the previous world record, he said that it left him feeling empty and unfulfilled because he believed he still had more in the tank mentally and physically to push his limits. So he set out to do this insane journey called the 50-50-50, which is 50 full Ironmans in 50 days straight across 50 different states. Almost no one believed in him, even his own coaches, but he still managed to do it. However, there's two burning questions that I had, and when I reached out to James on Instagram and got a reply that he was going to be in his hometown, which is also my town, Calgary, Alberta, for two days, I wanted to see if there was anything I could do to get an exclusive five-minute interview with him to ask these two questions. So I'm just about to head to Peter's Drive-In, a famous diner here in Calgary for burgers and shakes where I get to meet up with him and his son after they just landed here in Calgary to ask these two questions. So let's head on into this interview and see what James has to say. All right, guys, so as mentioned, we are here with James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy. It's such an honor to meet him in person. And as mentioned, you know, he's done some incredible things, but I've got two specific questions for this guy. Now that he's in town, we don't have much time because he's got time to spend with the family. But I wanna ask two specific things that I get asked time and time again. So the first thing is, for those who know, you did the 50-50-50, which is 50 full Ironmans in 50 days across 50 states. Yeah. As I was watching the Netflix documentary, there was times where evident that struggle was real. And I get, I personally get asked time and time again, what do you say to yourself when you feel like giving up? When you feel like there's nothing left in the tank, what do you remind yourself of and what do you tell or advise people to think about when they feel like giving up on their entrepreneurial journey or anything else in life? Yeah, it's, it's a very complex and difficult question to answer because everybody is so unique on their own journeys of and course. everybody has different goals and aspirations. Um, for me, it's, it's always changing and it's, it's an ebb and flow type of thing. Um, when, when you're on something like the 50, um, your reason needs to be solid, why, yeah. why you're out there, what you're doing, what you're doing. Um, and then at different moments, the, the reasons need to be stronger than, than others, right? Of course. And, and I always talk about, you know, you, everybody's always heard and you take these classes one that are like, find your why. Of course. What's your why? And um, when you're in Peter's Drive-In, <laughs> Fuel of Champions, right there. Exactly. Calgary, if you haven't been there, be there. With that. With that. <laughs> um, everybody says, what's your why? Yeah. And, and the, there's a problem with that. In, on a journey, 
if it's big enough. And if you're trying to get somewhere, a destination, a huge goal, a monster task, there's gonna be a moment where you're gonna be sitting there and looking in the mirror, and your one reason, and it's no longer enough. Of course. It's no longer enough. And so on the 50 and go, leading up to it, you know, my wife and we sat down with my family and we talked about it. And we were like, okay, we need at minimum 10 different really strong reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Because when, you, when you're laying on the side of the road and it's real, you need to be like, oh, that's probably not enough for me to get back on my bike right now. Of course. Okay, that's another, those two together, it's a little stronger, but still not enough, right? And so you need to, so I call it, arming yourself with a bag of wise. I love that. Right? And so because I'm telling you, when it gets real, <laughs> when it gets real, um, your one why is not gonna be enough. Yeah. And um, and that that conversation and your reasons why. So like leading up to the 50 in the economic crash in real estate, 2008 happened in the US, yeah. trickled effect around the world. Um, we lost everything. Certainly. Including my home. So my why, one of my big whys on the 50 was to get my life back on track get a home again that I can provide for my family, and that's no longer a why for me. Yeah. I've got my house. That makes right? sense, so it's, it's an evolution it's, as times change. It's like a, a human fry, exactly. a human fry a, peter. <laughs> like, conveyor belt of fries. Right, conveyor belt of fries. <laughs> so, so that's why I say it's difficult to answer that question, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant change. Depending on where you are in your life, it's gonna be too thick. <laughs> that's what happens when you go to Peter's. Thick exactly. Constant change, um, and, and just, and that, that's that's the beauty of, of life is self evaluation, and self audits. Of course, right. And so you, you need to be continually doing that in order to evolve your whys and reasons. And hopefully, you go through life and you accomplish a lot of those things. And the why has to change. Of, I love that as you evolve and progress, right? Certainly, because I find so many people get stuck in their why that was maybe from five years ago, and they haven't. It's no longer relevant. Exactly, no longer but but they hold true to it, and it's it's almost holding them back. So. That's that's super awesome. I love arming yourself with the bag of that. Now, the next question, the final question that I have for you is, as we saw, you know, kind of in the middle of the 50, there started to be some social media drama and there started to be some naysayers, some negativity. And I've gotten that as well with people throwing comments and shade. When you're on a journey that's filled with positivity and you have nothing but great intentions, what do you do to either drown out the negativity and stay positive when it seems like there's not a whole lot of hope left? Yeah, and that's where that's where a really good team comes into play. And that's where you have to be strong in your resolve and what you're doing and know that the path that you're on is the right one. Yeah. And there's this is a double-edged sword too because sometimes you have to know when it is the right time to quit and abandon something that's no longer right for you. And, uh, and you know, obviously we promote anti-quit and, and at all costs and go all in. And yeah. Those are a lot of the big mantras out there right now and I'm a huge proponent of it. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's, and this, is, this could be an entire topic for another conversation, you could have the wrong goal. Yeah. You can have the wrong goals. Certainly. And, uh, and at that moment, that's where the, that self-audit comes into play and, and realizing, you know, what are my goals? What's my true destination? Am I doing the right things? Does it ethically align with everything that I'm doing? And, you know, sometimes in those mo moments, and, and I wouldn't say it's, it's quitting, it's course correction. Agreed. Course Agreed. correction. And I think that's important. Um, I've seen a lot of people fail because they're too rigid with how they're trying to get to where they think they're trying to go. Yeah. And it needs to be more ebb and flow with, oh, that, that door just opened. I had no idea that that was even an opportunity. But if I was too rigid, I may have missed that door, that opportunity. Of course. And so being open to different things happening at different times and allowing the, the there to be course correction. And, and so it's not it's not it's not quitting per se. Um, it's it's realigning, and then you do have to ask yourself, okay, am I quitting or am I realigning? Right? Yeah, yeah. Those, those honest moments that that you have with yourself. And again, I think self audits are, are super important. Um, self alignment, and uh, when you when you get down, um, the, the biggest thing that people need to realize is nobody else's opinion matters more than your own. Yeah. And uh, and just constantly be true to you, your morals, your values. And, uh, and and you really can't go wrong. I think I think people need to rely more on their gut and their intuition, um, and and their team that's immediately around them, and and just just trust them and, yeah. and block everything else out. I think that's incredibly important because you know just from feedback that I've gotten from some people, they feel like if they change direction, they're almost 
failing or letting people down who believe them in the start, but there's nothing wrong with that because if you're channeling all your focus and efforts into the wrong thing when you could be so much more effective, efficient, and productive in something else that can realign you, I think that's ultimately what you should be comfortable with. Yeah, and, and here's the thing is people make big declarations, big goals, and we're, we're taught, hey, put that out there. We're held accountable and whatnot. Careful what you put out there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a sure recipe to set yourself up for failure and public criticism. Uh, be ready for that when it happens. Um, but ultimately, give the goals that you have in place the respect and time respect that it takes to achieve them. Certainly. And absolutely have big goals, but make sure that you are allowing the appropriate time to get to that destination and those goals, right? Does that make sense? Hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Well, guys, you know, James, thank you so much for your time here, especially meeting your lovely family. I'm gonna let you guys get back to your food. If you guys have been sleeping under a rock and haven't checked out The Iron Cowboy on Netflix, make sure you do so. Drop everything you're doing today and check that out. Any last words, James? Nope, just keep showing up every single day. People always say, what's the secret to success? The secret of success is doing a lot of little things consistently over a long period of time. There you guys heard it. So thanks so much again. Make sure you check his stuff out. I'll link it in the description below and we are out. All right guys, so there you have it. An exclusive interview and an inside scoop where I asked James two burning questions that not only I had for myself, but people reach out to me with on a consistent basis. So it was an absolute honor to get to sit down with James and ask these couple of questions as well as meet his amazing family. You can tell how humble he is and it was a fantastic opportunity to bring this exclusive content to you guys. So make sure you check out his documentary. It's going to motivate and and inspire you more than you can even imagine and make sure you provide some feedback on this video. Thanks so much for tuning in as always and we will see you next time.